Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and wordly magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading in unison Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm has he won for himself the victory. The Lord was, has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and all the peoples with equity. A reading from the first letter of John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with water only, but with the water and the blood. And the spirit is the one that testifies, for the spirit is the truth. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. One thing that I know to be true about myself is I am not as competitive as I think I am. I don't mean to say that I like losing. I am just like the police saying, I can't stand losing. But I don't know that I've ever really put forth that kind of solid effort that ensures victory will be mine. I do remember the joy, certainly, of winning in Little League, though that rarely happened. The joy of getting my first win when I was a wrestler, that again, rarely happened. But I know that that idea of winning, of overcoming, of conquering, is part of the human condition. There is that part of us that is a little competitive, that we measure ourselves based on other people, and not always for the better. In John's letter today, he used the word that said that our vic the victory has conquered the world, and that what helped us conquer the world but our faith? Now, conquered, that's a, that's a kind of a tricky word, isn't it? Certainly in English, because it gives that sense of there was somebody you really, it's almost too militaristic. You, you wiped them out. You, you won the battle. And I mean, the Greek word, which I know you're saying Ed's going to tell us about a Greek word. What's wrong with him? But there is this, I did it to use it because I was starting to play with English words that maybe I could lessen the notion of conquered. Say, overcome, that sounds nicer. But unfortunately, the Greek word Nike, which translates to conquered, is as militaristic as it sounds. Maybe there's a reason they called them Nike missiles. That we look at that notion of conquering, that at least certainly for John's community and the early church, there was a real battle going on as to who was going to be have the power, who was going to be the one speaking to authority. He said that we can, he could only do this, of course, through faith, it's the faith in Jesus Christ, the total unflinching belief that Jesus Christ was, is the Son of God. And that if you love God, that means you got to love Jesus. If you love the parent, you got to love the child. He said that earlier in the epistle. Now, at first I wanted to look at that sentence and say, oh, that's, I understand that, parent. 
You love the child because you love the parent. I mean, lots of people like me because they like my parents. I think, I hope some people like me because they like me, but certainly my parents being reasonably popular helped. But the aspect that John was pushing was also not only that relationship between Jesus and God, but also that saying, if we are children of God, then to say that you love God means that you have to love those other children as well. It harkens us back to the previous week. You can't say you hate your brother or sister if you're saying you love God. The two, they, they both can't come out of your mouth and be authentic. But getting back to that notion of conquering, as I said, I wanted to back off it because it, it felt too violent. It felt too total domination. And instead, I, I wanted to go to of overcome. Because I think that's an experience most of us have had at some time or another in our lives. When we have had obstacles uh, in our growth as human beings, obstacles in getting employment, obstacles in trying to get that paper written at the last moment, sometimes even obstacles of health, and not sure how you're going to be able to do it. And of course, the answer becomes, well, it's my faith that helped me push through. It's my faith that helped me overcome whatever that, what seemed like a mountain at that, at that moment. But somehow I managed to get up that hill, come down the other side. Again, it is that faith that I'm not doing it by myself. To overcome, to win. Sometimes, yeah, and when you maybe when you've actually overcome it, it does feel like you've conquered it. You won if the outcome you had hoped for happens. The other aspect of overcoming sometimes is about just being able to be at a place of acceptance of understanding that while it didn't quite go just as I would have planned, I'm still a beloved child of God. I still have my faith that gave me the energy to try. What's, remember, the, what's the Nike shoe phrase? Just do it? Maybe that's part of what faith invites us to, the, the testimony of to just do it. When the Spirit which John says testifies to the truth of Jesus Christ, the truth of people love the parent, love the child, that we are in fact called to conquer the world, not in a militaristic way, but in a way that says our faith helps us to make a difference in challenging the systems that oppress others, and the systems and inner struggles that we have that keep us from being fully the children of God we're called to be. He says that the truth of all these statements, the faith that we place is through the water, through the blood, and we should probably see sacramental theology there, the water being baptized, baptism and the blood, of course, being the Eucharist, but it's also that the Spirit testifies to it. We've tapped into those three things. When we are born, renewed in baptism, and nourished in communion, I think it's then that we can really begin to sense the Spirit flowing through us and encouraging us, nudging us, shoving us to say, time to go in. Just do it. The victory can be yours. You can conquer whatever obstacle seems to be keeping you from being all that you can be as a beloved child of God. Maybe there's the invitation and challenge to us in this, as this Easter season starts to wind up, as we start to point towards Pentecost, that through a shared commitment to just doing it, to being willing to listen, to the sciences, to the guidelines that are set before us, we're about to overcome something 
right here at St. Luke's, overcoming not being able to gather. Seems maybe a small victory. Certainly nothing's been conquered. But we are day by day overcoming those small little obstacles that are keeping us from enjoying life fully. And I believe that the reason this is happening is because people are not only having faith in a God that loves them, but also believes that that God is also working with scientists as well. There's still many battles ahead. Probably, you know, some that are ones that we would do as a community that others would be doing on our behalf. And there will always be those inner struggles that the only way to overcome them is to call upon our faith and to believe that Jesus is right there struggling with us and giving us the encouragement that we need. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the Universal Church Diocese of Bunbury in Australia, the Diocese of Bungoma in Kenya, the Diocese of Banyuro Katara, Busoga, and Centro Busoga in Uganda, and the Diocese of Busan in Korea. Our companion diocese, Ecuador Central and Littoral, our sister parish, Buen Pastor in Quito, Ecuador, with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Chip, our bishop, the Standing Committee of Ecuador Central, Cristobal, Bishop of Ecuador Littoral, all bishops in the Anglican Communion, members in ministry of the Fresh Start Program, members in ministry of the Clergy Sabbatical Fund Committee, members in ministry of the Companion Diocese Committee, members in ministry of the New Jersey Ministry to the Imprisoned, Juan Carlos, the Vicar of Buen Pastor, and Ed, our Rector, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present and virtually, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, and Phil, our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we also humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Amy, Austin, Ben, Bob, Bridget, Caitlin, Candy, Sharice, Charles, Connie, Danielle, David, Diane, Donnie, Eleanor, Frank, Fred, Gareth, Gary, Helen, Idrani, Jane, Jay, JD, Joan, Joseph, John, Johnny, Karen, Kathy, Lauren, Lourdes, Maria, Marilyn, Mary Ellen, Mary Lou, Marvin, Mary, Marin, Nancy, Patricia, Pearl, Phil, Richard, Richie, Ritza, Rob, Robert, Sarah, Sophia, Susan, Wendy, and Zach. Also Lois, Frank, Louise, and Gail. For the refugees on the southern border and the men and women who serve in the military, first responders and all who suffered during this pandemic and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, and any other adversity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Dottie, Dorothy, Jeffrey, Francesca, Scott, Elizabeth, Sarah, Janice, and Josie, and others known to us as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, who has so consecrated the state of matrimony, give your particular grace, we pray, to your servants and to others known to us as they celebrate their wedding anniversary. Grant that they may continue to love, honor, and cherish each other. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all mothers and to all who are like mothers to us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially, especially all those who have given their lives for our country and for victims of natural disasters, war, and acts of terrorism throughout the world, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. Luke and all thy saints that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, 
and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name through jesus christ our lord amen almighty god our heavenly father who have his great mercy and promise forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through jesus christ our lord amen hear the word of god to all who truly turn to him come unto me all you that travel and are heavy laden and i will refresh you god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life this is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning to everybody who's joined us on our YouTube channel this morning. We are glad you're with us and hope that you're getting some spiritual nourishment out of our worship this morning. If you are new to St. Luke's or have really just recently been joining us, we invite you to let us know of your presence with us by sending us an email and we'll get you into the, our communication loop so that you can learn of the many things that we are doing here at St. Luke's Beyond Gathering for Worship. As you know, um, today, the while you're watching this on video, there's a group of us, unless it's raining, watching or worshiping on the lawn. And last week it went really well. And next Sunday is the 10 o'clock services chance to also worship outside. But the great news in all of this is that the COVID numbers not only are below 25, but now they're even below 20. And I, am, I feel confident that that trend will continue. But of course, uh, what that doesn't change is, A, we're still going to need to meet, wear masks when we're gathered. Uh, you still need to make a reservation. And we will still need to be doing some social distancing. So it's really important that if you want to come, make sure you get your reservation in early. Because if we're inside especially, we have to be very careful about keeping maintaining the six feet apart until the diocese tells us we can't, we don't have to do that anymore, and they haven't told us that yet. Um, but the exciting thing is, of course, that it looks like Pentecost will be the day when all three services will be able to have people present. But again, remember reservations and social distancing and masking. The other things that I'd call to your attention would be the on the 20 third of this month there is a walk bike runathon being sponsored by the local ministerium and the money raised for that will go towards the emergency fund which helps people who are in a bit of a financial pinch with utilities or perhaps behind in rent due to circumstances beyond their control and also helps provide the shop right gift cards that we supply people with and then on the 25th, the diocese is having a webinar on the topic of reparations. This is a study that the diocese is doing of how it can respond, uh, and we being part of it. So if you are interested in this topic, if the word is perhaps confusing to you, or you're not quite sure what to make of it, I really would encourage you to come and learn more. And as always, I say thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who has maintained your pledge or sent donations in through the mail or using the donate button on our website. Your financial support of the ministry of this church is greatly appreciated. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, for he is the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again hath won for us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that is precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, that thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this Holy Communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. 
We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, for the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin to newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ, alleluia, alleluia.